Hey everyone, my name's Tina, and on behalf of our team, we are so glad you're joining us for Church at My House. Wherever in the world you're joining us from today, we're honored to get to spend it with you. I also want to give a special welcome to those of you joining us for the very first time. Before service begins, we want to give you a few helpful tips for our time together. Number one, grab your Bible so you can follow along with the scriptures in the message. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry, the verses will also be available on your screen. Number two, engage live in the comments. We would love to connect with you, to pray with you, and to care for you. If you're joining us for the very first time, please fill out our digital connect cards so we can get to know you better. And most importantly, number three, turn up the volume and let's get ready to worship together. We love you and we hope you enjoy today's service. Seems like all I could see was the struggle. Haunted by ghosts that lived in my past. Bound up in shackles of all my failures.
stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. Stop working, you never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hey church family, good morning. Thank you for worshiping with us online today. Whether you're watching from Huntsville, Haiti, Hungary, or anywhere in between, we are grateful that you chose to spend your time with us. I've been praying for you all week long, asking God to speak in a powerful way. I've also been praying that we would have ears to hear and truly listen to what God wants to say to us. In my devotional time, I came across this verse from Exodus 15, verse 2. It says, The Lord is my strength and my song. He has given me victory. This is my God and I will praise Him. My Father's God and I will exalt Him. I love this. That's what we're here to do today. Whether it's in our building or in our homes, exalt our God because He is worthy. Now, we're in the middle of a series called Courageous. Over the past two weeks, we've been looking at the life of Joshua as he leads God's people, Israel, into the promised land. Last week, we studied the battle of Jericho, and we learned how to make our walls fall. Today, I want us to see what happened after Israel's incredible victory. If you have your Bible with you this morning, we'll be in Joshua chapter 7, starting in verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. The verses will be on the screen for you to follow along. Now, before we jump in, let's take a moment and ask God to speak to us. Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, would you speak to our hearts and change our lives today? In Jesus' name, amen. Joshua 7, starting in verse 1. But Israel violated the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. Joshua and some of his men from Jericho sent some of them to spy out the town of Ai east of Bethel near Bethaven. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or three thousand men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all of our people struggle to go up there. So approximately three thousand warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events. And listen, their courage melted away. Can you imagine? After just experiencing the thrill of victory at Jericho, now the Israelites find themselves running for their lives. A people who were supposed to be strong and courageous were now paralyzed by fear with their courage melting away. This month we've been discussing how to live the courageous life. And there is nothing that will make courage melt away like facing failure. None of us like to fail. I know that I don't. Failure brings out our insecurities. It brings them to the surface. 
It causes us to doubt our abilities and our calling. We may even allow failure to derail all God is doing in our life. As I read these verses, I found myself asking the question, if God was with them, why did they fail? What God showed me is that the things that cause Israel to fail and lose their courage are the same things that can cause us to fail today. If you're taking notes, first, they were disobedient. Verse 1 tells us that a man named Achan disobeyed God. And as a result, all of Israel faced the consequences. But what did he do? We see the answer in Joshua 5.18. God said, Do not take any of the things set apart for destruction, or you yourselves will be completely destroyed, and you will bring trouble on the camp of Israel. Everything made from silver, gold, bronze, or iron is sacred to the Lord and must be brought into His treasury. You see, after the Israelites conquered Jericho, God told them that some items were to be destroyed and some were considered sacred and belonged to God. Achan got greedy and stole some of the items considered sacred. If you remember back to week one of this series, we learned that obedience was required for success. Achan disobeyed God and as a result, all of Israel suffered. In our lives... Obedience is vital as well. God has called us and instructed us to live with integrity, to value holiness, reject sin, and care about His kingdom. God is still looking for obedience today. Second, they got cocky. After the victory over Jericho, the people of Israel were feeling pretty good. So Joshua sent spies to Ai to scope out their enemies. When the spies came back, they told Joshua, there's no need to send the whole army. This is going to be a piece of cake. They should be able to do the job with just two or 3,000 men. Unfortunately, not only were they defeated, they were chased out of town and 36 men were killed while they were retreating. It was an embarrassment and it was a tragedy. Maybe they mistook God's power for their own. And maybe they didn't want to bother God since the battle looked so easy. For whatever reason, between Jericho and Ai, Israel's confidence in God transformed into cockiness. And they paid the price. Proverbs 16 verse 18 reminds us that pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. It happened to Joshua. And it can happen to us. Sometimes we will face failure in our life because we allow pride, arrogance, and ego to take us down the wrong path. In this passage, we also see that ultimately they left God out. What I find interesting is that in almost every chapter until chapter 7, it starts with the phrase, the Lord said to Joshua. In every situation, Joshua is spending time with God, listening to God. But with Ai, it's different. Did Joshua decide not to spend time with God that day? Was God speaking and Joshua not listening? I don't know. What I do know is God is never mentioned in the decision to take a small army to try to conquer Ai. They left God out of the decision. If you want to fail, this is definitely the key. Yet leaving God out can be commonplace in our companies, our churches, and in our daily decisions. We tend to lean on our own education, our experiences, our feelings, or the opinions of others instead of going to God. And this is proof that it doesn't matter how easy we think something is, we don't ever want to go into a situation without God's blessing. Now you may be thinking, Jason, this is all good advice to keep me from failing in the future. But what if I've already failed? I'm so glad you asked. Let's keep reading in verse 13. It says, Get up. Command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. 
You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. See, in this verse, God gives Joshua and he gives us a plan to overcome failure and regain their courage. Quite simply, God says, get up, get right, and get ready. Get up. God is saying that your failure doesn't define you. Don't allow your failure to discourage you. You might be down, but you're not out. He says, get real. God didn't mince words. He told Joshua that there were some real problems that needed to be corrected. Mainly, they needed to find out who disobeyed and stole the sacred items from Jericho. And in our lives, we have to get real and we have to understand why we failed so that we too can make corrections. And then God said, get ready. Get ready because you're not done yet. God's call is still on your life. You are not disqualified. God made it clear that once they corrected course, that they would again defeat their enemies. Get ready because failure doesn't have to be final. God can have the the last word if you let him. Maybe you're watching or listening today and what you're feeling goes even deeper than failure. And maybe you question whether God even knows you or cares about you. Listen, this is for you. The Bible says in John 3, 16 that God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that anyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life, eternal life. God knows you and God loves you. It doesn't matter how bad you failed in the past. It doesn't matter what you've done. God loves you. And He loves you with such a passionate love, with such a reckless love that He stepped out of heaven as the God-man Jesus Christ to make a way for you to be saved, for you to be rescued from your sin. You see, each and every one of us is born a sinner. We all rebel against God. We do things, think things, say things that disobey Him and dishonor Him. And because of that, we receive punishment. But here's the deal. God doesn't want you to receive that punishment. He doesn't want you to experience hell. No. Instead, God came down from heaven and lived a perfect life as the God-man Jesus Christ. He willingly gave himself up to die on a cross. To take your punishment. To take your sin. So that you wouldn't have to experience hell. Jesus died so that you may have life. But he didn't stay dead. And the Bible says that three days later, Jesus rose again from the grave. And he proved to everyone that he was exactly who he said he was, the Son of God in the flesh. Now, you may listen to that and say, gosh, I, I, I want Jesus. I, I want to follow him. I, I want to be forgiven. I, I want my relationship with God restored. It must be so hard. What do I have to do? Here's the beautiful thing. Jesus has already done the hard work and he has made forgiveness and salvation available for you. All you have to do is accept it. Trust him and make the decision to follow him with your life. To say, Jesus, I'm not going to be the God. I'm not going to be the boss of my own life anymore. Jesus, I'm going to follow you. I want you to be in charge. I want you to be in control. And it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. No. But no matter what you come up against in your life, you can have the full confidence that Jesus is with you, that he is never going to leave you or abandon you. But it's a decision that only you can make. And I want to give you that opportunity today. Here's what I want to ask you to do. I'm just going to ask everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. Let's make this a personal moment. If you can do that. And if you're watching or listening and you know that you need to have peace with God, that you need a do-over, a second chance, a fresh start, a new life, whatever you want to call it, I invite you to pray this with me today. God, I realize today that I'm a sinner. 
I've been doing things and saying things and thinking things that, God, they're just wrong. They disobey you. They dishonor you. Really, God, I've been rebelling against you because I've wanted to do my own thing. And I realize now that I need to be saved. I need to be rescued because I'm destined for hell. And God, I realize that that Savior is your son, Jesus Christ. God, I believe that Jesus died on a cross and that he rose again from the grave so that I could have an abundant life. God, would you forgive me? Would you save me? Would you make me brand new today? Jesus, you are my Lord, and I want to follow you for the rest of my life. In Jesus, it's in your name I pray. Amen. If that was you, that is the greatest decision that you can make with your life. But please, don't change the channel. Don't turn off this video without reaching out and letting somebody know. You can go to our website or you can check out our digital connect card in the post above or in the comments below. Give us a name and email address. Let us know if you became a Christian today or if you really dedicated your life to Christ today. Whatever decision you made, let us know because we want to pray for you and we want to celebrate with you. And not only that, I want to send you my ebook, Next Step for New Believers. Because there are some things that you can do to grow in your newfound faith, to become more like Jesus, to be everything that God has called you to be. And we want to make that available for you. We love you and we are for you. And Jesus loves you. And He is for you. Now, at the end of every service, we dedicate time to prayer. It's a part of, of Jesus knowing you. It's a part of Jesus showing His love for you and us showing our love for you to say that you're so important to us that we want to pray for you. We want to pray in agreement with you. We want to call your name out to Jesus for whatever it is that you're going through. And so in just a moment, we're going to worship together one last time today. And while we're worshiping, maybe you just need to stop and take a moment and worship. Maybe if you're in your home or if you're in a private place, you just want to throw your hands up and you want to sing praises to God. But maybe you have something that's burdening your heart. Maybe you have a prayer request that you want to let us know about. I encourage you, you can fill out our prayer and care card online. You can email us or you're welcome to post your prayer requests in the comments below. And we would love to pray with you and for you. Let's pray together and worship. And oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. God, we love you and we thank you again for this opportunity to worship you and praise you and be in your presence, God, because we know that a moment with you can change everything. And Father, I pray for people who are watching and listening here and around the globe. Father, I don't know everyone's name. I don't know everyone's situation or circumstance. But I proclaim that you do. You know every hair on people's heads. You know their hurts. You know their suffering. You know their successes. You know their dreams. And you know their failures. And Father, in this moment, I pray for those who have failed. God, maybe they've 
failed in business. Maybe they've failed in relationships. Maybe they've failed in parenting. Maybe they've experienced a moral failure. God, whatever it is, right now in the name of Jesus, would you give them such a God confidence that life is not over for them that you have more. God, that you are not done with them yet. Father, through the power of your Holy Spirit, would you encourage them? Would you strengthen them? Would you empower them? Would you equip them, God, so that they would get up, that they would get real, that they would get ready for what you have for them, God? And Father, I pray for those who have, even over the past few moments, sent in their prayer requests. Father, we pray in agreement with our friends and church family. God, would you move in such a mighty way? And we're going to give you the honor and glory. And we ask this in Jesus' name. The name above every other name. Amen. Thank you again for joining us for this morning's service. We truly hope our time together made an impact in your walk with God. If you made the decision to trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, congratulations. Following Jesus truly is the greatest decision you can ever make. Please let us know by filling out the Digital Connect card. We want to reach out to you and help you grow in your faith. If you're a member of our church family and would like to financially support the mission of Church at My House, you can give online at the link in the post above. We love you and we hope you have a great week.